Today what we're going to do is we're going to get what's called therapeutic phlebotomy because my hemoglobin or my hematocrit by virtue of um, being on testosterone um, tends to run a little bit high right around 50 and that's really our cutoff in the clinic. So our nurse Audra is going to take some blood. It's a very, very quick procedure. Um, it's simple. What that's going to do, um, typically when we withdraw about 500 cc's of blood, which is a half a liter, um, that'll reduce someone's um, hematocrit uh, about three points and hemoglobin um, down about one. So if you were to use hemoglobin standards, um, our cutoff is basically about 16 and a half or 17. So by virtue of the therapeutic phlebotomy, we'll be able to knock it down, you know, a single point hemoglobin wise, uh, maybe to around um, 15 or so, 15 and a half. And my hematocrit typically will come down to somewhere around 47. Um, as to how frequent you should be getting therapeutic phlebotomies, that's up to you and your, your doctor. Some doctors um, like to run people's hematocrits um, in the low 40s. And there's some suggestion in the literature that having less iron in your body. Iron is an oxidant um, and one of the uh, underpinnings of aging um, is high levels of oxidative stress in the blood. So by virtue of that there are some people in the longevity space um, that believe you should be running um, lower somewhere around 40 in which case you would be on a more frequent uh, phlebotomy schedule. So let's get it done. So again, this is a real simple procedure. It's just like um, having your blood drawn for typical um, labs, except as you'll see, the blood goes into a um, just into a bag that's sort of um, uh, sitting down low, and it basically is just draining in by by gravity. Some people, um, in the wake of these uh, uh, phlebotomies, um, do feel a little bit lightheaded. The way to sort of temper that is just make sure you come to the office and you're and you're well hydrated, um, and uh, that will. Uh, mitigate those 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 effects. Um, also, some people get very very um, sort of squeamish um, with blood and needles and things like that. Um, I've got these big veins, Audrey. You can't miss. Which one do you want? Doesn't matter. Yeah, do this one. All right. Quick poke. There it goes. So again, depending upon you know what you and your doctor decide and what your what their threshold is for getting phlebotomy, um, you know in this clinic it's a hematocrit of 50 or about a, a hemoglobin of about 16 and a half. They're a three times multiple of one another. <coughs> um, you'll come up with some sort of phlebotomy schedule that best suits you. You may have a physician that likes um, hematocrits of. of 45, which would be a hemoglobin of, of about 15, and that may be his or her threshold for um, having you phlebotomized. It's up to um, it's up to you and your doctor. Um, uh, again, um, 50. The reason why we came up with 50 is because we know somewhere around 60 or so. That's where you um, really become at high risk for the development of clots. Um, and that can be manifested as a heart attack. You get a clot in your coronary artery or a clot in your carotid, you get a stroke. Because the blood as it gets thick um, <clears throat> tends to sludge. So we use 50 here. So we have a 10 point um, safety window between obviously 50 and 60. And that's how we've, we've chosen. It's sort of an arbitrary number. But again, if you fall into the camp um, that believes that lower iron loads just in general are better for the body and I have no no issue with that I take no issue with that well then um, somebody's uh, threshold may be maybe lower than mine maybe uh, 45 or maybe they even want to keep you at uh, 40. That's the whole procedure painless um, very very simple again when you when you go to stand up Thank you, Audra. When you go to stand up, you just have to be um, a little bit careful if you're not used to having it done um, because you can get a little bit uh, get a little bit lightheaded. So you'll also notice that after you get phlebotomized, if you were to check your blood pressure, obviously because there's less blood volume circulating, that your blood pressure is going to be a little bit um, lower um, than normal. So you just got to be careful when you when you stand up and just make sure that you know somebody is is around. It typically, um, it, you know, historically has not bothered me in the past, but you may be somebody who um, is bothered um, by it. So you just you know exercise caution. That's all. Good. That's it.